Hi everyone, my name is Whitney and I'm a dental hygienist. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. Today, I'm going to be answering the question on how to remove difficult calculus. So whenever there is a super difficult piece of calculus to remove, I still go back to what a random senior dental hygiene student told me when I was a freshman preparing for a clinical exam in school. I remember she said to use everything you've got and see what works. So if there is, like to this day, if there is a difficult piece of calculus, I do just that. I use what I've got, starting with the ultrasonic. So the ultrasonic scaler is always a great tool to start with, and it, it really removes the bulk of a large piece of tartar. No matter how tenacious it is, I feel starting with the ultrasonic for me works best. Then I always go in with a scaler next. A scaler for me is my most comfortable instrument, especially for calculus detection. So it helps me be able to feel what I'm removing. And if there are any grainy, little grainy pieces of tartar left, I know that it's there and I can get in there specifically feeling what I'm doing. Sometimes we all know that calculus can be burnished, right? So in this case, um, well, whether it's burnished or not, I usually next go in with a curette, but especially if it's burnished, I feel curettes for whatever reason seem to help me with burnished calculus because you can kind of remove layer by layer a little better. Again, this is all in my opinion and what works for me. This is in no way a dental hygiene educational video. It's only a tips and tricks video from me, a clinical hygienist, a non-dental hygiene instructor. Okay, so again, this whole video is all for a difficult piece of calculus, right? But I also do this with all of my SRPs. I go back in with the ultrasonic at the end because I feel like it's smooth maybe, but I still go back in with the ultrasonic because I want to really make sure that the area is irrigated and the water lavage motion really cleans any residual debris out of there. So that's kind of how I finish. But then lastly... I check it. I check it with floss first. I feel like with the floss, you can really wrap the floss around the tooth to be able to feel if it's smooth or not. And if you happen to feel a little bump, like there might be a little piece of grainy tartar still somewhere there or a little clickable piece, whatever the case, if you feel that it's there, sometimes it is hard to detect where it came from with just floss. So then I would go back in with my Explorer and my Air to see if I can actually view it clinically or feel exactly where it is. So if you're still having trouble, you're like, I know something's there. I just can't figure out where. You can even use the probe end of an explorer to feel for it. The probe is sometimes longer than explorers. So if you're dealing with a really deep pocket, you can kind of use your probe as an explorer. Then I'll do all the motions again. So once you found this piece, I will do all the motions again. Ultrasonic scaler, hand scaler, curette, and then ultrasonic again. And then again, I'll check with the floss, air, and the explorer. If it's smooth, then great. If you're still unsure, you can always ask your boss on how they prefer you to handle this situation. Do they prefer you to take a post-op x-ray to view if there's any calculus left over? Or do they prefer for you to ask them or another hygienist in the office to double check for you? Sometimes that's great to have a coworker help you out. Just ask ahead of time what the protocol is if you're unsure and you'll be fine. You got this truly, even the most skilled and experienced clinicians still sometimes stress over a tenacious piece of tartar. So don't think it's just because you're new that you're stressing. We all stress. We're all in this together. We all want to treat our patients the best we can to the best of our ability. And if we do try our best, we will remove that tartar one way or another. We will get in there and we will get it. And again, it's always helpful if your patient is numb, obviously for an SRP, we want them to be numb. But if they are not doing an SRP and it's just a random one tooth area that has a piece of tartar, you can always ask your boss if they are okay with you using some topical gel in that area. I've found that even dipping your scaler, you can take some topical gel out and put it onto your tray and you can dip your scaler into it. Sometimes that even like takes the edge off for the patient. You just want to make sure they're comfortable through all of this as well. Thank you all for watching. I hope this video helped you. Please like and subscribe if it did. These tips are, I follow them every single day of my life at work. If you want more teeth talk, you can visit my website, teethtalkgirl.com where I have articles and videos all about healthy teeth and healthy mouths and good information for new grads and current hygienists. Peace. Love and tea!